Attention, this episode of Guitar Villains contains strong profanity and some drug references. You've been warned. Welcome to Guitar Villains. I'm your host, Tyler Larson. Why guitar villains, you ask? Because villains are cooler than heroes. It's just a fact. This is a podcast by guitar players for guitar players, and throughout this series, we will talk to some of the most creative and innovative minds in the guitar community, find out what makes them tick, while all the while becoming better guitar players ourselves. Thank you for watching the video podcast here on YouTube, and you can also listen to the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Today's guitar villain is Tim Henson. An innovator of the guitar and a no-nonsense straight shooter, Tim has cemented himself in the guitar world as a cutting-edge riff writer that combines elements of tapping, slapping, harmonics, and rhythmic devices second to none. Fronting his instrumental prog outfit, Polyphia, Tim has produced some of the most unique and fun guitar moments to fill your eardrums with. And the only thing more refreshing than his music is his no-bullshit demeanor. You're going to enjoy this one. So let's kick off this episode of Guitar Villains. Welcome to Guitar Villains, the show where we deconstruct and decode the guitar. And Tim, the first thing I want to know is, I know you don't have a drink right now, but what is your drink of choice at the bar or in the studio? Um, I, I'm a red wine guy. Um, I haven't actually been uh, drinking too much during the pandemic for, I don't know why. I think it's just, I'm not like leaving the house. So like, I don't, but I used to drink all the time. Um, before the pandemic, you know, because I always be on tour, and what else is there to do other than drink? <laughs> so, um, yeah. but yeah, yeah, red wine would be would be my drink of choice. I saw you drinking some red wine in your uh, Demarzio pickup video, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people didn't realize. I think you might have been joking in that video the entire time. Oh, dude, I was drunk as hell. I was very fucked up for that video. <laughs> wow. Okay. Makes sense. Well, I mean, you, your playing sounded great, so maybe that was like the, the, the guys. People wouldn't get it. Well, we, we kind of shot a bit of the playing before we started drinking, but then, like, um, we just did our best after that. Mm, I got yeah, you. I tried Hennessy the other night um, for the first time. Oh, really? I think. Yeah, like I, I, I guess it's like a, a staple um, in like hip hop sessions, um, and uh, I just figured like when in Rome, and so um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great. <laughs> Would, <laughs> wouldn't recommend it. That's uh, good. Not ass. Mind, but um, you know, it'll sure get you fucked up. Yeah, like a cognac. I I had a Hennessy Manhattan once. Have you had a Manhattan before? Uh. Uh-uh. It's uh it's primarily a whiskey drink and they call it a Manhattan because of the area code two one two. It's two shots of whiskey, one shot of sweet vermouth, two dashes of bitters. I had it with Hennessy and yeah, just like you're saying, I guess the rappers have, you know, the secrets out, but like if you really want to feel numb, then <laughs> Hennessy's the way. Yeah, it, it it kinda burns a bit. Um it's definitely <laughs> uh it's definitely a, a pretty like manly drink i guess just because like they just they were just shooting it just drinking from the bottle you know and it's like oh. yeah i certainly couldn't couldn't do that um but uh yeah I, I like to drink wine because it's an easy way to get drunk because i don't care for drinking you know like that's i actually hate it i just mm-hmm. like being drunk you know and um <laughs> and it's pretty easy to gauge like where you are with the wine so that you don't get like too drunk. But I, I guess that's like my choice of uh, choice of drink there. Gotcha. Well, we do things a little bit differently on this show. We're going to play some games. I'm going to try to get to the bottom of what makes you tick as a musician. And hopefully you'll have a great time. And maybe the next time you guys roll through Nashville, um, you can swing by the studio and we can do this in person over a glass of wine. Yeah, that sounds dope. <laughs> I actually don't know anybody in Nashville, so... Oh, hit me up next time you're through. We, I was going to see you guys uh, 
before the the fucking pandemic canceled life, um, you guys we were gonna actually stop by. I was talking to your um your manager or whoever. But uh, anyway, we'll we'll table that for next time. Yeah. Uh, cool. So the show's called Guitar Villains because I think villains are cooler than heroes, and I've always found the villain characters are deeper and more memorable. So the first thing I want to ask is, out of all movie or comic book or video game villains out there, who would you say you identify with the most? And that could be something as simple as appearance or as nuanced as character trait. And I can give you my answer for which villain I think you're most like, and you can respond with a different choice or agree. Word. Yeah, let's go. Let's start with that. Okay. So I think that you are most like the Lich King from World of Warcraft. Because... Wait, I'm going to Google that. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. is the Lich King? The Lich King is... A, he's hell-bent on uh, extinguishing all life. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you were on the record, Tim, saying you hope guitar music dies a slow, painful death. Do I have that right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the thing about the Lich King, too, is that dying would actually be a welcome end because otherwise the reanimated corpse of your followers would be standing by your side as your soulless undead champions and they would be destroying everything in their path. And I think that kind of describes your fans like an army of undead zombies waiting to see what you do next. I am looking at the art of this guy and he definitely looks like a badass. So, um, that's, that's pretty cool. I guess uh, I'll address that, um, thing. (laughs) Uh, I guess what I what I meant by that. I'll just kind of give some backstory there. Um, so we're like on tour in the UK, and this interview happens, and uh, I have no idea who this interview is with, nor do I really like. I just don't care for the interviews, you know. Okay. And um, it's right after sound check. And I wake up for sound check, and then I go back to sleep for nap time. Mm. You know, that's like my routine. And because there was a surprise interview, I guess it wasn't a surprise, but it was a surprise to me. Um, I was pretty grumpy. Um, I had a case of the grumpies, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, because that's like my nap. Right. And um, so it's me, Scott, and Yvette Young, because she's on tour with us, and she's a good friend of ours, and. Uh, She's taking the interview very seriously, which is great because I don't have to, right? At least one person is taking the interview seriously. Um, And I'm kind of just saying, like, whatever, which I realize now is not a great idea because one, I don't even think this, like, mag, I think it was Total Guitar. It was one of the guitar magazines. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I have no idea like if that's like a UK thing or what, but like it's not something that I'm familiar with. But once one publishes it, then Guitar World and Ultimate Guitar and all the other ones that I do know will run with it. So um, I guess to clarify, obviously, like that's a pretty like clickbaity headline. Yeah, I'll say. Uh, and, uh, like, obviously, I, I enjoy guitar music. And, and the key word there is, this is kind of just me, like, being a snob, is the music part of it. Yeah. You know, I enjoy the music part of it. Like, so, for example, let's take an album like Godfrey Govan's Erotic Cakes. Um, this incredible fucking album. It serves a purpose. It's like the guitar is, you know, playing music. Um, I guess what I meant by that quote was I hope that like guitar nonsense dies mm-hmm. a slow, painful death um, which by nonsense I mean like no I, I mean you don't even have to clarify it it makes sense and yeah, like it's not like I mean, there's so many people just like posting bullshit. It's you know, it's not playing any. You're not really playing anything, you know. Like, right. Just like take take a step back and realize that like you know, like the guitar is a means to an end. It's the end is music, right? The guitar is a tool, and so many people are treating it like it's not, you know. 
Like yeah. they're, they're forgetting about the music part entirely. Yeah, the way so, I interpreted it is you hope the riffraff dies out and just it becomes less about a competition of creating yeah. the most amazing guitar flurry and actually using because you know guys like Guthrie or Steve Vai or people like that they wield the power but they don't constantly overuse it and you're saying maybe the shit that's overplaying can go away yeah. and that's yeah. yeah and and you know it's like a pretty subjective thing you know there's there's people that are going to watch this and say well well Tim you play the most bullshit music of all <laughs> music, music of all um, and, and I can't disagree with you there, you know, like it's, that's your opinion. And, uh, you know, people just got really mad at mine. And of course, like, you know, that was my fault for not like really clarifying and not taking that interview seriously. And, um, you know, just after all this time, you know, I think, um, are you familiar with the rapper six, nine? Sure. Okay. So I, I was just talking about this with Herman on uh, Herman Lee on his stream mm -hmm. and, um, I think he's like a good example of like what not to do uh, in terms of like, you know, he kind of for so long, like his like rise to people knowing about him was to be hated, okay. you know, to be disliked. Right. Um, he was like the most dislikable person you could dislike. Right. And that was kind of like his shtick. And I think that only works for so long. I think it only works to like be noticed, you know, and, and, and it, it, you know, at some point in time, you continue that, and um, you're just a dislikable person. And and that kind of was evident just recently when he dropped his most recent album, and he was uh, competing with Big Sean for the number one album. And it was projected that Big Sean was going to do about a hundred and six nine was supposed to do one hundred and fifty thousand sales first week. And what happened was Big Sean did like 103, got number one, and 6 9 did like 50, which, you know, 50,000 first week is still a very large number. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it wasn't what, it was one third of what was projected. You know what I mean? Um, his, his last album did way better. And uh, I think people just like kind of got tired of his bullshit, you know? So to, to that, I say, uh, you know, it's not the best thing to be dislikable um, for that long. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I feel you on that one. That's for sure. It's it's but good. Anyways, to... Back to your question. Um, <laughs> about the, I definitely like this Lich King character. Just aesthetically, he looks super cool. Um, I think the the villains I identify with the most would be, and this is not to say that I like share any of these like ideals or like anything. These are all, all positive qualities of the villains on this show. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you seen... Are you, are you an anime watcher? Yeah. Okay, have you seen Berserk? Berserk. I, I definitely... Here's the thing. I used to draw, like, sketch a lot. Uh -huh. And I, that's what actually got me into anime. So I, I would probably recognize... And that name sounds familiar, but fill me in. Okay, so in Berserk, there's a villain by the name of Griffith. Um, and then there's an other anime called Devilman Crybaby. Um, or just Devilman is like the original one from the 80s. And the villain in that one, his name is Ryo. And they both play the same kind of villain where um, I guess they're like supposed to be like super pretty boy, whatever the fuck. Uh -huh. But just like almost angelic. Um, and you know, I'm going to, I'm going to spoil it here. So if you're haven't seen any of these, just like, I don't know, skip like a minute or two from now. Um, Rio and devil man cry baby is actually Satan. Um, he just turns out to be Satan. Like they just reveal that at the end. Um, and he's, you know, Satan is an angel. Um, and so he's like very beautiful in that way. And actually, you know, he, he become, you know, like angels are like genderless. Um, and in the show, I guess they gave him two genders, uh, like towards the end there, where he had both boobs and the dick. Yeah, it was just like a really cool thing to see that kind of like a trans representation, like in an anime. But um, yeah, the whole angel thing, and then and then like Griffith is like, I guess part of the God Hand, which would make him like the fifth fallen angel or some shit. 
but um it's pretty dark they both do like really fuck shit because uh you know they're they're like it, one is satan and the other one is kind of like satan uh -huh. um in the, in the sense where they like like just destroy the whole world and shit but um they just have like an era like a an aura of like coolness to them that i admire you know like obviously none of the bad things like killing the entire world and stuff like that <laughs> Yeah, um, no human sacrifices for you or yeah, anything. Yeah, none, none of the, like, super demonic stuff. But, like, you know, they, like, when they walk around, like, like before, like, Griffith goes into, like, super, like, demon angel mode, like, he's, like, a very well-respected, like, character in the show. Like, everyone, like, very much wants to be around him. Um, they're, like, drawn to him. Same thing with, like, Rio. Um, they, they just very smart, very... I guess likable and like charismatic, you know. Yeah, I like. And that. then they turn out to be fucking shit asses, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I definitely that makes sense with the imagery that you kind of convey. I don't know if you do so the this artwork is or like the this this right here is just Rio as Satan on my arm. Um, I just I fuck with that character so much that <laughs> it's like that, and then. This right here actually kind of this is Skull King. He kind of looks like um, Lich King. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot. So yeah, I do. I I do fuck with your comparison. So this nice. it's a cool yeah. image, imagery wise, at least you know. I just had. Um, I think you're probably friends with Jason Richardson. He's played with you guys. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's a good homie of mine. He was shown. He was talking about his tattoos as well. It's it's becoming a theme on this show. <laughs> yeah, tattoo show and tell. Yeah, man, it's cool. I, man, uh, I can't give too much away. I haven't even done that on my own channel, and I know I know the kids are asking. Oh for yeah, it. dude. I mean, Wait I'm sure I'm sure everyone's up. curious. So we got we got a little sneak preview there for for the full yeah. gamut. So I want to play a little uh, a little segment here. I call this burning questions. <laughs> These are rapid fire questions that if you were to conduct some sort of live master class or a live stream where anybody could ask you anything they want regarding music, these are the questions that they would ask you instead of asking you like about guitar playing or secrets and wisdom or anything else that could help them become a better guitar player. They would no doubt spam you with these questions, which don't totally matter, but for some reason must be answered. Okay, got it. Okay. I will, I will do my best. All right. What gauge pick do you use? Uh, 1.14. 1.14. .14. What gauge strings do you use? Uh, 10 to 52 on a 6 string, and then whatever the equivalent of that is on a 7th and an 8th. What's your number one guitar? Uh, the THBB10, my signature guitar. Makes sense. What's your favorite amp? I don't know. I've never actually played an amp, like, like owned an amp. Like a real, I guess the only amp I've ever owned was like a PV Ultra, like way back in the day. And then I, I think we like were playing like 5150 combo amps for a little bit. But then after that, it was just like, Right now, like we play orange, but it's the Axe effects running through the orange. So it's all right. <laughs> What's your favorite guitar pedal? Um, the whammy pedal is pretty cool. Oh yeah, the, the Digitech. The wah pedal. I'm gonna say the wah pedal. The wah pedal. Yeah, those yeah. are two great choices. Um, can you can you lean forward a tiny bit? It's sort of glitching out. Yeah, yeah, you uh, want me to like... Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. That's the perfect spot. Oh, word. So the, the, the camera's doing some, like, weird fucking, like, uh, like blur the background shit, and if I go too back... If you back, lean back, then, then, you're, then, then you're in the ocean. If you, okay, <laughs> you're right that's there. That's fun, but, right. yeah. Cool, okay, man. So here's the sweet spot. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm not going to try and get into the same shit I feel like Everyone asks you where, like, where's the guitar going, Tim? Why aren't there more guitar heroes? Uh, wh why isn't the guitar the same instrument as it was in the 80s? I just think that whole conversation is kind of tired, and maybe you do too. Um, 
But yeah. what, what I think is very interesting about your approach from what I've gathered is you're not really like you're an excellent guitar player, but I don't necessarily know, know if you're a guitar player first. You're more of like a hook writer. And I feel like the basis of your playing and it's it's really interesting and unique. Uh, it lies like a very simple, catchy motif underneath all of your cool riffs. Uh, would you say that's your approach most of the time, or am I just imagining things? Yeah, I mean, I definitely would, you know, like there to be something to latch on to. You know, and that's what a hook is. It hooks you in, um, in, in music that I create. And, uh, you know, that's not to say that all of it is like that, but in the, in the ones where I specifically, you know, like intended to be catchy, like I try and make it catchy. Um, but yeah, I mean like being a guitar player kind of just like, that's kind of my fallback. <laughs> right. Um, in terms of like writing music, it's like, okay, well, I'm like feeling a dry spell of creation and creativity. I take time to get better at guitar and learn new things to kind of re spark the imagination, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, first and foremost, like, yeah, I, I try and like start simple and then expand. So if if you can make a melody and a chord progression sound good on like the stock Omnisphere preset, which is just like a saw synth or some shit, like it's just yeah. the most basic stock sounding thing. If you can make a melody and chord progression sound good on that, when it's translated to a guitar, it's going to sound incredible. Yeah, you know. And then, like, all you have to do from there is just flex a little bit here and there, like, to kind of add flair, if that makes sense. Um, like, to, to keep, obviously, like, a, a lot, a very large portion of Polypheus fan base is guitar players, you know. Mm-hmm. So they're very easily entertained with the flexing parts. So as long as, like, the meat of the, the hook is there, the flexing parts are kind of like the cherry on top, if that makes sense. Are the flexing parts as satisfying, or do you feel like sometimes you are like, I need to flex a little bit more here to to cater, or do you not even think about your fans when you write music? It just sounds like the way you're describing it. You're like analyzing how your fans feel about the mu- the music? That uh, That's kind of an afterthought. It's more so how do I feel about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and sometimes like, yeah, I mean, like, the, the ideally, the, the flexes should be very satisfying in terms of, like, okay, all I need to do is, like, take this two bars out here and replace it with very, like, a very creative fill, per se, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so that, like, when it, when you lose, like, the familiarity, it's just, oh, my God, what's happening? And then it fucking lands, like, very satisfyingly. Yeah, you know, um, or like it lands in a place that you don't expect. A lot of the times, so what I like to do is like have shit like come, like hit on like the two instead of the one, um, so that like it just throws you off, but like it still like catches itself back in the pocket, um, and uh, yeah, you know things like that, like just like creative surprises that are like ple- like pleasant surprises, you know. Totally. And kind of seems interesting. You sort of um, are kind of like the rapper of the guitar community. <laughs> um, it, you, you know, it's it seems like some of that influence. I assume you listen to a lot of rap. Uh, that's mostly what I. Listen mostly, to. <laughs> so it's it feels like that kind of informs the the riffs that you write in a way. Um, and I think blending genres is been like an inevitable part of musical evolution forever um but what's interesting about polyphia is not many instrumental bands have awesome music videos they're usually just like a huge jack fest of like a guitar player standing in a dark room or like uh some hell asylum with smoke and fans blowing everywhere um which as far as i'm concerned only steve vai is allowed to do that but you guys have a really cool blend, not just with your music, but also the visual elements like that I think makes hip hop so attractive. Is that something that 
is is drawn for that or are you just creative in that way you see instrumental music videos in a different lens um yeah like there's there's definitely a lot of hip-hop influence like visually uh right now it's kind of we're like in between albums right now where we're like just kind of finishing up this new one so everything prior to this kind of feels like I'm not so proud of it anymore as I once was when it first came out, mm. you know? Yeah, I, um, I hear that. Like, looking back on, like, a lot of um, just everything up till now kind of feels a bit cringe. But, um, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like, visually, you know, I'm, I'm more proud of, like, the the last three singles that we put out from the last album we put out. Um, not so much Look But Don't Touch because that was – kind of just like a hey we need to drop some shit and let's just throw this together in a month and we'll have fun with it and like drop it on april fools so the video was like super wild and just nonsensical Mm -hmm. before that there was definitely like a a theme to it like uh for example our song od Mm -hmm. um it's like the term comes from like i guess new york where they say od a lot um which basically just means like very Mm-hmm. Oh, like or it's just a lot and that song has extra a lot of notes yeah it's there's so many notes in that song um but we didn't spell it like o-d-e-e which is like i guess how they do that mm-hmm. but we just spelled it od for like overdose because like just prior to that i had like a fucking insane acid trip that was like <laughs> just really bad um and i i don't know i don't think you can overdose on acid but I think it just can just make you do things that are insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I felt like, I thought I was going to die, like, very, you know, in a not good way. It was not a good trip at all. Like, I just remember, like, the next day when I was, like, okay, thinking how grateful I am to just be alive because, like, my mind was just not in a good spot the day before, like, of just thinking, like, you know, things that aren't okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, you know but like at the time it just seemed like a good idea um but you you know thankfully everything was fine the next day but i just remember like just that was like one of the lowest points of my life was that acid trip and so i kind of like based the like od music video off of that trip where you know there's like a scene where i'm standing in a room filled with like butcher knives (laughs) and like, the, like, there's just <laughs> sounds not, horrifying. There's just like splattered all over the room, um, and uh, I'm just like playing guitar in this room that like it's it's you know kind of just like all the like scenes from that video were just like shit I was tripping on really bad. Um, shit. So, so do you ever even want to watch that music video? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's cool. It's like the way we did it was cool and artistic. So like it's you know yeah. And I I often remind myself like yeah don't uh, you know trip if you're not like in a good headspace in general you right. know from that video so it's a, it's a good thing but um yeah you know it's it's definitely hip-hop inspired um in terms of just doing like doing things a bit different than like you normally would see in, in our kind of scene of music i guess totally Today's episode of Guitar Villains is brought to you by Guitar Super System. Are you tired of YouTube ads telling you that YouTube guitar lessons suck? Me too. I don't know about you, but somebody setting an acoustic guitar on fire or teaching crappy cover songs in front of a musty black curtain feels a little disingenuous to me. I'll get straight to the point. Join tens of thousands of other guitar players and visit guitarsupersystem.com to join the most popular independent guitar learning platform on the internet. If you're a beginner, there's an entire curriculum called the Beginner's Corner just for you. If you're an expert, the music theory and technique curriculums reach the highest levels of mastery and are based on industry standard learning methods I've used since graduating Berklee College of Music. If you're somewhere in the middle, you're actually the perfect candidate. The choose your destiny approach allows you to cater your learning experience to exactly what you want to accomplish, whether that's improving your improvising, ear training, learning new techniques, songwriting, and more. You'll also have access to private live streams, lesson comments, and a community forum for feedback, as well as exclusive giveaways and new curriculum releases. The best part is everything that I just mentioned is included in one monthly subscription and you can cancel anytime or, like a lot of people do, upgrade your subscription to a yearly pass. Of course, you can also just learn guitar right on YouTube for free because YouTube guitar lessons don't suck. 
if you know where to look. So check out guitarsupersystem.com. Now, back to Guitar Villains. Well, speaking of your music, I want to uh, transition into a little game, and I call it Name Those Notes. So the concept here. <laughs> yeah, high, high production value on this podcast, Tim. Um, the concept of Name Those Notes is pretty simple. I'll play you a quick sequence of guitar notes from music that you have recorded over the years. And you have to tell me what song those notes come from. Okay, word. We'll see, we'll see if we can do this because I've, there's like 50 plus songs that we have out. Well, so, I think I'll do my best. You may surprise yourself. We're going we're gonna to see how well you know your catalog and how well you can recognize your guitar playing. And it'll spur a little conversation about the music too. So we're going to start with something easy that I think you'll get. And then we'll get progressively harder. Sound good? Cool. All right. Here we go. That is the worst. That is indeed the worst from your album, The Most Hated. <laughs> this is this my... Is like difficult. You're like picking like snippets of licks that I could have just reused in any song. <laughs> well, do <laughs> you got it right away, though. So that's, that's the thing about this. It's... Uh, it's it's interesting, um, but th this album is actually my favorite Polyphia album. Uh, the most hated. Yeah, it's kind of like if uh, if Ratatat had sex with Drake, and then <laughs> somehow Guthrie Govan had an alien love child that nobody knew about, and that alien love child had sex with the Ratatat Drake baby. Word, yeah, I. <laughs> that was definitely our most like experimental time, and uh, some some of like my favorite music as well. I thought um, you were gonna say that's what we were going for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's it. You nailed it. Yeah, I, I I really like that. But I I've read a couple. You know, you guys were afraid that maybe people wouldn't like it or something. I thought it. I thought at, it was at very, first. Very it really great. wasn't. It was really not well received. I remember people just like kind of writing it off when we dropped it, like there was absolutely zero, like, um, I think maybe because it was an EP that people just didn't give a shit, but like, mm. there was a lot of like non interest, you okay. know, and it, it took a, like a year and a half of like touring on it for people to start really fucking with those songs. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, and it, it kind of caught up super late because at the time, you know, it's like guitars and beats, essentially, that, that record. You know, there's not too much real drums happening there, you know? Right. And at the time, there just wasn't, like, a lot of kind of progressive guitar playing over beats. And you fast forward to, you know, three years later to 2020, and, like, if you look on Instagram, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So, I, I mean, you guys were definitely a forerunners in that way, I think. Really influential. Yeah, it was a little ahead of its time. <laughs> um but, you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. I, I like that record a lot. Okay, awesome. Let's go on to the next one. You ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. That's lit. That was easier. <laughs> <laughs> lit. I love that, that little hook. Um, a lot of this earlier stuff, and this, is, this isn't your, is this your first Polyphia Polyphi release or? There was one this before. would be our second full length second album. Full length. It was a remix that we remixed ourselves with the help of like Lo File. Gotcha. Um, from our second album. Yeah, a lot of this earlier stuff was like major oriented, like major key and, and really slippery and like a reflection of the moment in time when it was released. And mm -hmm. I don't know I've I don't know if you guys have purposely moved a little bit away from this style. Uh, as far as like the the kind of happier major tonality, or a lot. Or what the thought process there was like we used to be like very death core death metal in the sense that we had a shitload of blast beats. This is like even before we were gent, right? Um, in like 2013, like and when I was still in high school, like it was like we were a band, and, like we were playing like death metal, um, and so there was a lot of like like this shit going on, you know? 
Yeah. Um, and just a lot of atonal stuff. And so we wanted to move so far away from that that we cut out all the atonal things and only kept the melodic things. And then eventually we wanted to remove the blast beats and the double bass and the, like any kind of heaviness. So we started just kind of focusing like on, on like pop structure and pop sensibility. Mm -hmm. And with that came, you know, like, oh, we can't really do any like dark sounding stuff because it's going to be like metal. It's going to be like heavy, you know, and we didn't really want to like be in that, you know. And then as we like got better at what we were doing, we realized we can make dark sounding shit without it being metal. Um, mm -hmm. And like Goat was kind of the first thing like that where it was like dark without being metal because it was mostly like trap influenced you know right and it was just a difficult thing for me to kind of figure out how we were going to like implement like technical guitar playing into like dark not as melodic trap because like it's easy to um you know play anything with like lots of chords and lots of like melody to latch on to like with guitar like if you're just playing along to like a, a radio song it's very easy to do that when there's lots of chords to latch on to but when you only have like one or two to bounce back off of and they're not very melodic sounding it's super difficult so um once we realized we can do that then we started switching to more like of just different vibes that we wanted to hit because we realized it didn't have to be categorized into oh this is metal sounding or whatever Totally. Thanks. Yeah, that restriction of the harmony kind of blooms some interesting results that, that you guys, just like you outlined, is uh, that's really interesting thought process. I didn't think of it that way. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to another one. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would be a nice little segue into uh, to talk about uh, congrats on the most gawked at riff uh of the guitar community in the past year tim you did it thank you I, I, that, not that that wasn't really my intention when making that riff no but of I'm course not that, um, i'm glad that people gawk at it yeah it it, it like it, i mean this tune perfectly captures your guitar playing uh, what i what i think is unique about it um and i want to go out on a limb here even though like it doesn't sonically sound like it in any way. Are you as into Jimi Hendrix as I, love as I am? Hendrix. Okay. I fucking love Jimi Hendrix. Okay. I wasn't sure. I, I didn't really, I couldn't find, I do research for these shows and I was trying to find, I couldn't really find as much stuff on you as, as certain other people. But, um, you know, some people are like, yeah, Hendrix is great, but like, I'm really, really in to him. And, you know, I just hear a lot of his tendencies in the combination of rhythm and lead work. Uh, in your playing, in like where the melodic and harmonic pieces of the phrases fall together, um, mm -hmm. you know, it just seems like that's a huge compliment to me. I he is my absolute favorite guitar player of all time, um, and I I look up to him in every way possible. You know, he he was pretty much you know like a, a lot of people will hate me for saying this, and this will probably be one of those dumbass headlines, but he was pretty much like you know drake back then you know what i mean like how drake is now where he headlines fucking everything and yeah. he's like one of the biggest artists in the world like hendrix was that like as just as big as it gets and he was a guitar player you know like with those songs like oh yeah so. I, I i would take it okay i might actually make some fucked up headlines but I, i've been <laughs> toying with this idea and you just kind of gave me the the means to say it but i have been thinking about how Hendrix maybe is responsible in part or in entirely for hip hop because yeah, I never heard somebody talk over like rock songs, you know, like how he would kind of sing, talk, like talk, yeah. sing, whatever. I don't know if that existed before him in a mo in a worldwide way. You know what I mean? Absolutely, dude. And I think, I think, like, the embodiment of Hendrix was just, like, sorry, just Hendrix was, like, the embodiment of, like, cool. Yeah. Like, the, the word cool, like, all of its connotations, like, it was just cool as fuck. 
like the coolest thing you could be was like Hendrix, you know? And then like, I think like hip hop is taken, you know, like that's, that's kind of how I view hip hop is like, it's just one of the coolest things like, you know, um, vibe wise and everything. And like Hendrix just, I just love Hendrix so much, man. Like I, I, I think about him in that way of like, he was like the rappers back then, Yeah. you know, like what the rappers are now is like what Hendrix was back then. Just a fucking like, the coolest superstar you could be because like it wasn't like bubble gum mm-hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. it wasn't like the the most like it was raw i mean easy it was, to tell yeah. shit it was like are you experienced yeah. like you know what i mean like once you listen to it it's like oh shit i'm experienced now <laughs> you know it was it was just the coolest fucking thing i admire hendrix so much yeah i can't wait for the uh, the hawaii concert to come out the have you seen that the um the maui live in maui concert that's coming out in october um it's all this unreleased that out for sure yeah it's all this like super high definition unreleased footage of a concert that he played um Mm -hmm. i'm really looking forward to that all right man one more uh one more song here and this will this will close out the segment you ready Mm -hmm. here we go Off the new album, I think I, I think I'm actually like know our catalog way too well for anything <laughs> to trip me up. <laughs> yeah, man, you got that right. So I don't know what that's called. I just found it on your YouTube channel, and it's like a teaser for for the fourth album. And that's mm-hmm. all I have. What what? It, let's let's use this as a transition to talk about uh, whatever you can with your uh, with what you guys are working on currently. So that song is done. Um, I. I like wrote an email the other day to our team talking about maybe we should just drop it like and give the fans something to like chew on while we're finishing the rest of the album. Um, yeah, I think it, we're going to be a little, a little more strategic than that, but um, just yeah, do that it. Song, <laughs> that song is really cool. You can um, drop it in my inbox. That's fine. Word. <laughs> I might. <laughs> um, yeah. So Wes Houck, uh is on that song a bit. Um, okay. He helps with, with some of the writing there uh it it takes a turn like halfway through into like a a vibe we haven't really hit before which is um i don't know the the term for it it's almost like it's not tango and it's not like i don't know there's a it's like a specific chord progression that's like we have not like hit that kind of vibe before and it gets really cool um, but I'm incredibly stoked on that song, and I think people, I think our fans are going to dig it quite a bit. Um, well, it had kind of like a Latin, like bossa nova feel. Yes, uh, bossa nova is the word. So, so like it gets really bossa nova, like in the second half, oh, it kind of like beat switches a bit. Right on. Um, and it gets really bossa nova, um, and it, it like gets hard bossa nova too, where you're like. <laughs> There's, while also still bossa nova ing, you know? <laughs> There's that genre blending. That's cool. I can't wait yeah. to hear that. Is there a name for it, can you say? Or, or it's just the, the bossa nova, we can leave it at that. So currently, it's just called Batch. That Batch. Like, it, it, that's a working title. It's not like at all what we're going to call it. But um, the reason it's called Batch is because I started that riff um, in a session with uh, Heavy Mellow. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he's a, a guitarist producer who. Um, who was it? He's worked. What was the name? Heavy, Heavy Mellow. Heavy Mellow. Uh, he he like plays with Melanie Fay a lot, um, and uh, like he's he's done like a lot of cool things. He did like a bunch of stuff on like Halsey's Badlands, um, mm. and just plays like he plays guitar and produces like really well. So like we're we're doing this session together. And we're not really, you know, making art, making anything for any particular artist. And um, like I like, we sat down. I'm like, you want to give me some chords? Because he has like the coolest chord ideas ever. Um, and he just like he gave me like four chords, and then I um, I was like, okay, those are fire. And then I added some more chords to it, and then just like built that riff kind of just right there. Um, and because I was doing it on the nylon, um, I was like, damn, this is kind of like. Bach a little bit um but not really at all but i was just like i need to like hit save and call it something so that like my files don't end up just on my desktop right. you know like after every take of this um so i just like called it batch uh 
as like a shitty way of saying Bach. So <laughs> that's cool. that's the the working title story there. All right. Well, we'll see what it's called uh, whenever this thing drops. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your technique. My audience is starving to get a little peek uh, inside your mind when it comes to some of the really cool guitar work you've done over the years. Uh, I know you were forced by your parents to play violin as a very young child, uh, Mm -hmm. which I've heard you mentioned you hated, but I think it's interesting the sort of orchestral tendencies that you exhibit. And I, you know, you're very much a finger style player with some hybrid picking and traditional picking woven in, but it's almost like a, like a violin, a piano and a bass had sex and then that offspring had sex with an eight string guitar and your your skills were born there's a lot of sex in this podcast i don't know why um it's a sexy podcast yeah i don't know i don't know is this is this something that you think about like your your playing style like how would you describe it um see that's a, that's a hard question uh but i i don't necessarily think of it in in like a classical sense like that um i kind of have had a very hard time bridging the two instruments in terms of like, I guess really the only thing that kind of like I benefited from, from the violin was just general finger dexterity. Mm -hmm. Um, But in terms of like any crossover there, you know, like I'm able to like sight read violin music, like very well. Um, I have no idea how to fucking do that on a guitar. And I have, I can't even tell you like what the hell, what note that is. Like, unless I was like, like that's fucking B and then counting down. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. so I have absolutely no knowledge of what the hell I'm doing on a guitar. So, you know, I kind of approach it almost like if I had to like, do like a comparison like that to like a classical instrument, I'd say piano is like the closest thing um, because like a lot of the way that I build my riffs are starting with chords. So the left hand and then the right hand would be the melody and then playing both things at the same time, like a piano, a pianist would. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, I guess that's the like closest thing, but I do try and like incorporate, you know, cause when you do things like that, it ends up being like pretty mathy. Um, when you think about it, that's not a genre that I necessarily identify with is math rock because everything that we do is in four, four. Um, and there's no odd time to anything that we do. Uh, but just by sheer, like doing that, it's kind of math rocky in that way. But I try and implement like classic guitars playing into it, like the Hendrix type stuff. Yeah. Um, into those kind of riffs to like make them less like peggable into like a, a thing, you know? Yeah. I don't know who said it. I think it was Frank Zappa. I could be wrong, but I think he said the most complicated time signature is four, four because of what all the, all the different, uh, you can do with four, four that you can do. Like, uh, when I was in school, I, I took an ear training class and every class, my teacher would try uh, and make us, you know, guess what the, not guess, but determine what the, t- the time signature was. And every time he would fuck us up with a 4-4, four, four, you know, something or other. And uh, yeah, so just writing music in 4-4 four, four isn't any sort of like knock. <laughs> you can do so much with, with that, oh, and yeah. especially if you're just feeling it, you know. I was super surprised to learn... Um you know, like just just recently, like a few months ago, um, Tosin Abasi taught me how to thump, mm. and uh, like I'm like learning this technique from him, and like we're kind of like going over like examples of like animal songs, mm. um, and I was super surprised to learn that like a lot of those are in four four, you know, and and just they just have like odd meters and things like that. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about to be honest, but. You know, it just makes it sound crazier than it is, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Not common. Um, yeah. I have, a, I have a couple of wind-down questions as we, as we near the end here, Tim. Uh, what is the hardest thing about the guitar, and what is the easiest thing about the guitar? The hardest thing about guitar um, is playing good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, is uh, finger tone. Ah. It's something that, like, 
you have to have years and years in your hands or like uh, not years but like time mm -hmm. time spent and and it's the only instrument that has you can do finger tone with both hands you know what i mean because like um you know piano is like a percussive type instrument and violin is you can do finger tone you know like when you vibrato like this on a violin um but there's you know when you're like plucking it you're really not getting like like a pizzicato you're really not getting too much of your finger tone there but on a guitar you know depending on like how it how you pluck it or like how you you know use these fingers or even tapping you can vibrato like with your right hand so many things you know i'm like there's a lot of something that i am actively thinking about when i play and I'm just trying to improve on like so much is just like kind of closing my eyes and listening as I'm playing. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, if I didn't see a visual, like, would this be good? You know what I mean? Right. Um, and just kind of try and listen to just like, make sure that like my tone in my hands, like not, not anything to do with the guitar or the pickups or the, the actual tone that I'm playing through, but like the tone in my hands, um, is it, does it sound sweet? Does it sound pleasant? Like, you know, um, and and I, I, I'd always try and play on like a tone that is fairly revealing um, so that I can like kind of keep track of like that. Um, and then the easiest thing about guitar, uh, I guess it's like a fairly like easy beginner instrument. You know, like if you wanted to just like pick up an instrument like for whatever reason and like you had like a month to like prepare like you could play a full song by the end of the month and like it, it would be fine you know like depending on if you're just gonna play chords or like whatever you know just yeah. some like basic shit and like maybe like sing along like it's a pretty you know good beginner instrument and in the same way that like piano is too i guess like if you're just gonna be playing some like very simple things you know totally so. that's interesting what you said about um playing with a revealing tone like not hiding behind any any uh walls of delay and, and reverb or distortion yeah. that, that's uh that's good discipline that's a good disciplinary tactic to employ for any guitar like, player yeah and even like you know playing without a tone just unplugged or like mm -hmm. with an acoustic or just anything you know like it's does it sound good does it sound pleasing like um and and with finger tone comes like you know like vibrato and, and slides and fucking all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And like so many times I catch myself just being sloppy as all hell um, when it comes to those like nuances. And it's just, you know, you look at um, like Steve, for example, Steve Vai, for example, it's just the way he has complete control and mastery of the instrument. Like, and, and like he can, he can make it sing and he can make it fucking squeal and he can make it scream like all within the same 10 seconds. Yeah five seconds you know um there's so much like emotion that that's you're able to like convey like with your hands and it, it just comes from time on the neck you know absolutely and there's like you know you could be like the fastest player on earth but fucking your your finger tongue could just suck cock and just sound <laughs> bad you know it's all about it's all about the finger tone and and uh, honestly vibrato is is my uh my primary technique that i harp on anybody asks me like how do i what's the most important thing to practice it's like bend that note because you can play total total just terrible shit and then end on this amazing climactic bend and everyone remembers that bend but if you play like the most technically satisfying passage and then you bend this shitty like out of tune vibrato it's like oh that guy's not that good what's yeah that's it. it's super revealing you know like a yeah. or like a fast like e kind of like <laughs> you know, shit shit ass vibrato yeah. like it's super super revealing and and you know like i said i i harp i i catch myself all the time being sloppy as hell it's like dude i'm so much better than this i promise like yeah. um but uh like especially when it comes to like i said the slides and the vibratos and the bends you know like it just it, those are difficult techniques and like you know it requires like extreme mastery of your shit to like get good at that i guess but um totally what's your uh what's your favorite airplane album you're flying on an airplane what album do you like to listen to dude maybe like 
there's like a few that I cycle through, but like my favorite three would probably be um, Nothing Was the Same by Drake, Jesus by Kanye, and then um, the fuck is that one called? It's the, I think it's Rodeo. Um, the Travis Scott album with like the like I guess kind of his like breakout album. Um, okay. But yeah, those three I just fucking I absolutely love those. Delightful. Uh, we got build a band here. Okay, so you are in a band and there are four other people, living or dead. Who would you want in that band? You and four others. Oh man. So no singers. No, it can be a singer too. Whoever you want. It could be a triangle oh. player. All right, the first and like most important like person I would pick would be a producer. Okay. Um, just to kind of like, kind of have a master plan of like what the hell we're gonna be doing, you know? Yeah. So producer wise, um, I guess I could pick like any legendary producer, but I don't really want to. I would pick, I would pick Lido. Um, and he's not like that. You probably don't know who, who I'm talking about, but, um, I don't know who Lido is, but you can fill us in. Yeah. He's incredible. You see, I guess he kind of started like, as like, I, I maybe like on SoundCloud as like a future based kind of producer, but then moved like into like doing like pop records and like big records. And then kind of just like, I don't know. He, he makes like really amazing stuff and I identify with it a lot musically because it's interesting and, and you know, there's parts where it can get technical, but um, he keeps it like, you know, the soul and just the meat of the shit is just good melody, good rhythm, good fucking everything is dope. So I guess I would pick Lido as the first and he's like a multi-instrumentalist too who like kills it on so many things. The best producers uh, are. Yeah. <laughs> so that like he'd be a very strong asset to have. And then I guess I could start building the band from there. So I would pick a rapper for sure. Um I'd pick Drake just because like I would love to like like have his, you know, lyricism be kind of the, the focal point. And then musician wise, um who would I pick guitar wise? I would love to have someone that could just shit all over me, but would do the things that like me and Lito want them to. <laughs> um, so maybe like, maybe like Guthrie or somebody just like, I was thinking just, him too. <laughs> just so insane with it. You know, like he, like no he, knock I, on you, but like that, if you said shit all over and then insert anyone, then Guthrie's the choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean like technically he could do anything. Yeah. I mean, and he's so also just, like the most humble dude as far as yeah. I Yeah. And, and, you know, like he plays with like Hans Zimmer and like will do whatever like Hans needs him to do for the music. You know what I mean? Yes. So I think he would be like a great asset to have in the band. Um, drummer, I would pick. Uh, I don't know that many drummers, but, but maybe like I'm, I'm trying to remember names that my drummer likes, his favorite drummer. Mm-hmm. I think his favorite drummer is Eric Moore. Um, Eric Moore. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's you, Eric Moore, Lido, Drake, and Guthrie Govan. Right, but we need a bass player, so Thundercat. Thundercat, you added it. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you a sixth member of Thundercat. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, that that would be, like, my, I guess, dream thing. But I would love to... You know, I would love to, like, sit in the back of the room, yeah. kind of what I feel like Kanye does, where he just has, like, the best people on earth come into a room, and he's just like, I want you to do this. And then it's a Kanye song, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. that's what I would love, is just to sit in the back of the room, not have to do anything other than say what I want, and, mm-hmm. and, and it happens. Um, okay. And then when I don't know what I want, I can rely on everyone else. You know, right. to like help me figure out what it is that I want. 
Yeah, it's like a football coach who's like, I just surround myself with people who are smarter than me. It's like, yeah, a, it's a winning exactly. formula for sure. Um, Dude, I, that's the dream, man, is to just like it. Like, you know, when, when you're like Kanye famous, you could you can have anyone in the world you want, like make any kind of music you want them to make. And that like you could just, it's just the coolest thing. Totally. So that's, that's like my dream, I guess. <laughs> Finally, to loop in t- uh, your guitar super villain alter ego. Uh, I have one final question for you, Tim. What do you believe about guitar that most guitar players would think is crazy? And this could be like a hard truth that guitar players need to hear or something that you know that others don't or maybe a misconception about the instrument or whatever you want. What do you believe about the guitar that others wouldn't believe? This is a hard. I don't know, man. Hold on, man. Let me sit here and think about this. Deliver your truth. Speak the gospel. Um, you don't. You don't even have to be good at guitar to make like dope music with a guitar. You know, it. Yeah. it like I see this time and time. Like with I work with so many producers. And a lot of them do not play instruments, but like they're like geniuses when you give them a fucking, you know, keyboard and a DAW. And um, I've seen, I've seen them write like incredible guitar riffs just on the fucking keyboard, you know? And then like, if you were to give that to a guitar player and say, Hey, make this like good, like it would turn out incredible. So yeah, I mean like you, you don't even have to be good at, a guitar to like make good guitar music you know which is kind of ties in back into that bullshit that i said for that fucking interview it's like (laughs) there's so many people like trying to be good at guitar that aren't making good music you know and it's like you have the whole thing fucking backwards dude like the priorities are flipped yeah it's like again music is the means to the end I'm oh, sorry, music is the end and guitar is the means, you know what I mean? It's like the tool, that, it's the, the car that you're traveling in to get there. Yeah. You know? Totally. So. Perfect analogy. Well, as we wind down here, Tim, uh, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to be on Guitar Villains. It's been a blast to talk to you. Um, we will look forward to what treacherous plots you devise next in your musical endeavors. All right, well, I appreciate it, and... Um, I don't know, I feel like I should do like an evil laugh or something to close it up, but I, I'm, I'm not going to do that, so just pretend like I am. Alright, I'll insert like a Lich King noise here. Yeah, fire. <laughs>